But well, welcome to the show. Uh, let's talk local politics. Uh, Malaysian politics, when are the elections going to be? No one really knows. I don't think they've decided. Yeah. I think yeah, we know that elections have to be before April next year. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I think the talk now has been to push them for next year, um, but I think this year is still very much on the table. They're trying to reduce the tensions in order to be able to see if they can find the most opportune time to basically win some political support. Mm -hmm. I think it's more than likely the earliest it can be will be after budget, uh, because I think they want to use the budget as an opportunity to shore up the political support. Yeah, and also a very important election electioneering tool. I guess the budget. Um, it's interesting. What actually? I've always been curious as to what actually plays a factor come election season. So I mean, you've, we've seen a lot of things that have been, um, I guess, big events in Malaysia. Whether it's birthday three, um, you know, there's there's a case with uh, with the whole scorpion submarine things coming out. Are they flashes in the pan? Do they actually affect voting on the ground? I think these type of issues tend to consolidate the base. They tend negative type of issues. Like corruption tend to focus on opposition. Issues associated with economic reform or issues that are sort of challenging UMNO tend to fo focus on the base for the BN and particularly UMNO in particular. I think when we look at voting patterns, there really are three or major issues that stand out. The first and most important pattern is the issue of the economy. Mm -hmm. What's happening in terms of inflation, cost of living issues, job creation. These are the things that really move things. One thing about 2008 that we tend to forget is that one of the issues about that underscored the change was the change in drop in commodity prices. This is where things moved. Right? So we have to look at the economy and the fundamentals of the economy. And this is where I think Najib is actually making a real risk in the sense that the larger numbers are going down in terms of growth, in terms of the commodity prices, which I think the longer he waits, the more he faces in terms of the challenge. The second issue that I think matters for certain people has to do with the issues associated with corruption. Mm -hmm. and, government. and more broadly, the corruption issue reflects issues of governance. governance yeah. yeah. And so how do people feel about the way that things are governed? And so some people say that things are being excluded and monies and resources have been taken. Other people look at governance issues as the sense of that they're not part of it, they're not getting their share. And so I think we have two very different strategies. Uh, Najib's aim has been to try to focus on trying to uh, focus on the lower rank, lower uh, income groups mm -hmm. by giving resources and actually f pouring money in the communities. Huh? Uh, while the opposition strategy has been to try to expose corruptions, to try to build a negative type of issues. So it, it depends on how you feel within those types of parameters. So that's the second area. Huh? And then the third area is that actually affect voters' patterns huh? are actually the issues of uh, other bread and butter issues, such mm -hmm. as crime, yeah. <laughs> such as issues associated with um, uh, you know a sense of moral leadership <laughs> and to who's the right leader. I think there there is a contestation between Anwar and Najib as who should be the right prime minister. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's why we see a lot of the, the dirt that's being thrown by, around about both of them mm -hmm. that is in the platform. So I think these are the factors that are there. Under, there's another element that I would highlight that I think is important, and that is the sense of, of place within the society. The sense, and most of it is perceived along racial lines, but it's not. It's more than that. It has to do with the sense that they feel that there has a, a representation, a voice, and we see Malaysia has changed to a much more pluralistic, diverse type of voices. So how this plays out in terms of whether or not people feel that their voices are being listened to or that they're going to be secure is actually going to be a factor, a psychological factor in this election. And when, you know, when people get into the final stages of voting, it's that psychological factor will make them push that in one direction or another. Right. And I think that's where it's going to come into play. So I guess the bigger negative issues um, in that case then kind of fortify each side. And I guess it forces each side to hunker down. Is it not, it's not changing any minds, is it? Well, I think the middle ground is very narrow. I mean, I think, you know, it used to be 30%. It's now down to 20%. And it, dep it varies by is community. Is it really that high, 20%? Well, it, I think one has to recognize that th that uh, it, in Peninsula, it's different than East Malaysia. <laughs> in East Malaysia, and there's a lot of people, and there's a lot of people who just really don't care about politics. They're sick of politics. There's too much about apolitical things. They just don't think about it, right? Yeah. So therefore, you know, they don't choose sides. They only choose when they have to, right? And yeah. so therefore, and there's been so much sort of, uh, should we say, continued uh, discourse, uh, negative discourse, that there's more and more moving away from it. So uh, in the Malay community, it's about 10%. So it's mm -hmm. actually very uh, narrow in the Malay community. In the Chinese community, it's even narrow. Most of the Chinese have decided. Yeah. But it's the East Malaysians, the Indians, I think in terms of racial 
legal terms, but also very importantly in terms of ge generation, younger voters. A lot of younger voters have not decided how they want to vote. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're waiting and seeing because they haven't thought about elections, and they make up a large section of the electorate. So I think we have to recognize that there are some that are there. And right now, both campaigns have been largely negative to try to consolidate their bases. Yeah. And so, and, and there are some people who are kind of reluctant opposition supporters. Right? They're sort of the, we don't like Anwar, but we'll just vote for them. Yeah. Or, we, or we don't like this person, we'll vote for them. And then same, you have the same thing for the, for the BN. You have reluctant BN things. Well, I've always voted for them. I really don't like them, but they're maybe the better than the other ones. At least I know them, right? Yeah. And this is so the middle ground starts to expand in these kind of reluctant groups. Yeah. And this is where positive campaigning, sort of alternatives, actually start to move them. And I think so we haven't seen the campaign evolve because we've actually had. I mean, we've had three years of campaigning. I mean, everybody's Correct. tired. Well, it started so. right. It, it started immediately after March. We were September 16th with everything. Right? No, I mean, it's, it started immediately. But then, it, it, I mean, the minute Najib got into office, he was like, I have to get reelected. So, I mean, you know, I mean, it's it's been ongoing. And I think, you know, the question becomes for the middle ground will be whether or not um, they offer alternatives. Otherwise, you might see lower voter turnout in some areas. Right. Uh, because why come out when, you know, they... It's a foregone conclusion. For, for, but on the other hand, it's so competitive. Of the 222 seats, I believe 170 of them are competitive, and it, it's still a very fluid situation. The margins are very tight. So it makes for a very close contest. So every vote will count, even the ones that are illegal. So, <laughs> so in that in that situation, I mean, I guess the swing votes have always, I guess it's Southern Sarawak and and, uh, and and I guess Felder voters. Now, has anything changed since oh wait, uh, in the sense that have we seen a swing back to BN or have we seen a, a bigger swing in the other direction over to the opposition? Well, you know, Sarawak has been interesting because it's a bellwether for the national picture, right? And that's why in 2006, a state election was a bellwether for 2008, right? right yeah. And so we see a similar dynamic of 2011 yeah. uh, state election, bellwether to maybe 2013, 2012, right? Yeah. Uh, depending on what, what numbers you look at. But I think what you see uh, there was you saw an increase of opposition support, but at the same time, there's certain bases that they were not able to move into. And, G and Sarawak is, you know, in order for the opposition to win in a place like Sarawak, they have to win by huge margins because of the seats are actually the margins are very not very um, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know not very they're very large so in that context I think you do see that there were gains and I think that's an important right. uh, dimension but you also see a limit to those gains but in Sarawak is uh, in some ways a little bit different because you have a, a dynamic such that there's been almost over politicking right and the yeah. issues are sort of staying the same it's time it's it's the it's a sense of uh, place within the, the state and local issues so I think you're gonna you're gonna see some movement but not massive movement the state to watch I think is, is Sabah mm -hmm. Sabah there are a lot of very interesting dynamics on the ground. Uh, you know, you have a lot of, there's a Borneoization movement that really has taken root in Sabah. Um, and you have, you no, know, the question really will be whether or not the opposition can get its act together to offer alternatives. You know, and there's been a history of political change every nine years in Sabah. It's and okay. this is your nine. Yeah. <laughs> so I think, you know, what you see is a, is a dynamic there that I think is important. Now the Felder voters, I think, are, are important because they have been wooed. But I think they're more of a test for UMNO than they are for the opposition. Because it, I think they, they're really for Amno to lose than for the opposition to win. They were very, very hard to win in the first place right, from the perspective of the opposition. But anything that is down is actually negative for opposite for, for Amno. And I think this election for Amno is about Amno's position in the national picture. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because there is no Barisan National that is working on the peninsula size anymore. I mean, it's, oh, it works in the context of, of the national picture in terms of East Malaysia. Yeah. But in terms of MCA and MIC, they really, you know, um, they're very, they're, they're very. They're no longer real major partners in the Barisan National, on the national front. And so therefore, as a consequence, um, it's really about UMNO in these particular areas. Now, the states to watch that I think are going to be very important in nationally, of course, are Johor, mm -hmm. uh, Pahang, because of the issues associated with Linus, Negri Sembilan. Mm -hmm. um, and importantly, I also think Selangor remains very, very important because the election is extremely close in terms of the margins. Para? Parag is also important, especially for the Indian vote, yeah. because that's what's going to determine the vote move. And you've seen movements among, you know, the, the attacks against Abiga have really had, I think, a negative impact. Um, and I think they were uncalled for in the first place. But that they have got that they've done this in a particular way doesn't hasn't reflected well on Malaysia. Right. One last thing: um, is it better if they wait longer, or is it better if they have it tomorrow? I think it's a question of better for whom. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I think, and you know, and who, and what's your perspective in that regard? Oh, what I meant, what I meant, they, I meant if the government waits longer. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I think you know, I don't, I'm not so sure waiting long is good for Malaysia, because what you're doing is everybody's focusing on campaigning as opposed to solving the country's problems, and I think, yeah, and they're spending money on trying to win political votes as opposed to spending money on trying to deal with sustainable development issues or and trying to move the economy in a particular direction. I think this cam the campaigning process has gone on for very long. Now to answer the political question, I think that the longer Najib waits, the weaker he becomes. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much. We have Bridget Welsh, The Fairly Current Show.